Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam, rasulullah. Sisters, please, I can hear talk. Please, no talk tonight. Tonight is a night where, you know, Laylatul Qadr, some of the Sahaba used to swear by Allah that this is the night of Laylatul Qadr. I don't want the angels to descend and to come and to see our masjid is in a, in a chaos. I want them to see that this masjid in tranquility and peace. Say Ameen. Ameen. So, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who witness, witness Laylatul Qadr. And to be among those who the Prophet said, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Those who pray the night of Qadr, Allah forgive their sins. And tonight, inshallah, Shaykh Ammar will be talking at midnight to you. After Sister Rana's talk, uh, right after Raweeh, Shaykh Ammar will have a whole entire Friday night lights about Laylatul Qadr and the significance of it, inshallah ta'ala. But in my talk tonight, I, I want to talk, obviously, I told you before tonight, I want to do a fundraising for the masjid. But before I ask you for, for actions, you know, Bab ma ja'a fil ilmi qabla al-amal. Al-Bukhari rahimahullah, he said, knowledge before actions. Knowledge lead to action. I want to make my talk tonight about a verse in the Quran, which is something I've been reflecting upon for a while. Since I read it here in the masjid few you know, days or maybe a couple of weeks ago, when I was reading in Surah Maryam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِن كُلُّ مَن فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا آتِ الرَّحْمَنِ عَبْدًا لَقَدْ أَحْصَاهُمْ وَعَدَّهُمْ عَدًّا وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدًا Everyone in the heavens and earth will come to Ar-Rahman. And it's amazing how Allah used the name Ar-Rahman as a submitted servant to him. لَقَدْ أَحْصَاهُمْ وَعَدَّهُمْ عَدَّا Allah knows each and every one in the heavens and the earth. To the extent not only everyone, but everyone and what everyone have done. Everything you have done. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, when you come in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already have the counts قَالْ فِي أَحْصَى عَدَدَ أَنفَاسِهِمْ نَفَسًا نَفَسًا That even how many breaths you have taken in this dunya is counted. And each and every one of you will come in the day of judgment alone. What that means alone? Yani when you meet Allah, you will meet Him alone. We come in groups but when it comes to meeting Allah, when it comes to meeting your deeds, when it comes to meeting your actions, when it comes to looking at the record of your deeds, you will be alone. And also coming to Allah alone, it's a very unique thing if you think about it. My dear brothers and sisters, we come to this dunya alone, individuals. Even if you have Twins, one of them comes first. تَأْتِ هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا farda. Then, you leave it farda. You leave it alone. وَتُوضَعْ فِي قَبْرِكْ Alone. You will be replaced in your grave by yourself. And you will be resurrected alone. Until you gather with everybody. And everybody in the Day of Judgment feels that he's alone. Even though there are so many people around him, but he feels that he's the only one there. He cares only about himself. Nafsi, nafsi. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إبراهيم يقول سلمان الفارس رضي الله عنه إن إبراهيم عليه السلام يقول يوم القيامة يا ربي نفسي نفسي That Ibrahim the father of all the prophets in the day of judgment said, Ya Rabb, my soul, my soul. And Imam Ahmad reported that in Nabi Sallallahu said that Isa ibn Maryam, his mother, approached him. And he said, Ya Ummah, inni la ughni anki min Allah, min Allah shay'a. 
My mother, I can't help you with anything. It is my, my concern is my soul. And if this is the case that you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, you have to be prepared for this fact. You will meet him alone. You will stand before him alone. Don't let this dunya deceive you. Don't let all the materialistic things around you deceive you. Because it all will be left behind your back. You will come alone. No parents, no spouse, no friends, no community, no secretaries, no employees, no one alone. And the people when he goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is one of two. Either he will be looking forward for it. So optimistic. Have done so much. And he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with him, welcoming him. Or you know from yourself that you have not fulfilled the obligations that have made on you. You know your own sins more than anyone else. You, all, you know your shortcoming more than anyone else. I don't want any one of us to come in the day of judgment to meet Allah mustawhishan, khaifan, kal'abd al-abiq idha utiya bihi ila sayyidi. I don't want any one of us to come to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like someone who ran away from justice and now he's captured to be brought back to meet the court and to meet his judgment. You know when you see in the news somebody get arrested in a country, then he was transferred back to the country, how he comes in humiliation to meet his basically his justice. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً وَتَرَكْتُمْ مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِكُمْ You will come to meet us individually. And you will leave behind you what we have blessed you with in this life. مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ يعني أعطيناكم فَتَتْرُكُ خَوَلَكْ يعني إيش خَوَلَكْ خَدَمَكْ خُدَّامُكْ You will leave behind you those who used to serve you, to protect you. There is no insurance company to cover you. There is no lawyer to defend you. There is no one to be there for you. You come everything, you will have no money. You will not have fan, you will not have a position. All these things, you leave it behind you. All the things that Allah have given you, you will leave it behind you. وَمَا نَرَى مَعَكُمْ وَمَا نَرَى مَعَكُمْ شُفَعَاءَكُمُ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّهُمْ فِيكُمْ شُرَكَاءَ لَقَدْ تَقَطَّعَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَضَلَّ عَنْكُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that all the ties have cut in that day. Cut, يعني no, no connections. That's why Allah said in the other verse, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ Allahu Akbar. In that day when a people run away from their spouse, from children, from family members, from brothers and sisters, each and every one have their own concern. That's why they run away. All these ties that connect us together, cut. I couldn't think of anything more powerful to tell you how when you come to Allah, and when you come to Allah, it starts by the moment you are placed in your grave. That when your akhirah start, من مات قامت قيامته. When you die, your qiyamah start. I couldn't think of anything can represent that concept more than a scene that I have seen and many of you have. Who's the one who loves you the most? Care for you the most? 
your parents for sure ما في أرأف ولا ألطف ولا أحسن ولا أحرص عليك من والديك بالجملة and guess what they are the one may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give your children long life but any of you have a children right now if one of them passed away you will be the one who leave him alone in his hole you the one who will purchase and dig that hole to leave your own son there and you leave your father and mother will leave you alone behind their back what can be more powerful picture than this to make you realize the reality of this dunya and the reality of what Allah says each and every one will come alone that's why if you really care about what's ahead of you you should prepare for it whatever you really want to receive in the akhirah it's what you plant today it's what you give today Abdullah ibn al-Shikhir yaqul ataytu al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa yaqra al-hakum al-takathur Abdullah al-Shikhir said I came and I found the Prophet I'm reading al-hakum al-takathur you get distracted and just basically uh, 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 with al-takathur with collecting some people collecting you know money positions titles you know businesses children uh, 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 fans whatever everybody collecting something in this dunya and Allah said that big that distract you that became your main concern and you keep running and collecting and running and collecting and running and collecting and building and building until all of a sudden you are in the graveyard <coughs> and you die يقول فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ابن آدم مالي مالي son of Adam the son of Adam us children of Adam us humans we keep saying my money my money I want money I want to secure my future I want to secure my family future I want to make this I want to make this فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهل لك يا ابن آدم من مالك إلا ما أكلت فأفنيت أو لبست فأبليت أو تصدقت فأبقيت Son of Adam, your money is one of three. Your money is one of three. Something that you consume and it is خلاص ما شاء الله destroyed. يعني you ate it and done. Or something that you put on, you wear and it will go bad after a while or something that you have donated and that what you have preserved that's your money anything other than these three belong to your, to your inheritors anything extra than these three anything extra is not really yours <laughs> that money that you have and you collect and you do it's not yours it's the belong to the one comes after you and i told you that interview is something amazing the guy who used to drive a billionaire driver the billionaire died and all of a sudden a couple of months a wedding the driver married the widow married his widow so the interview he became a billionaire out of no no way then he said the funny things i've been driving him for years and i saw how hard he works and all these years i was wondering how hard he works for himself but today i realize he was working for me he was not really working for himself because i got not only the wealth i got the wife too So your real money is these three things that the Prophet said. وفي هذا الحديث رواه مسلم وفي الترمذي أيضا أن عائشة رضي الله عنها she got a sheep 
Nabi Sallallahu was happy that he got a sheep. You know, usually three months goes by and there is no cooking at the house. So sheep, meat, that's something rare to happen in the Prophet Sallallahu house. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and said, what happened to the sheep? قالت يا رسول الله تصدقت بها وما بقي إلا ثلثها. He said, Ya Rasulullah, he was proud of himself, herself. Ya Rasulullah, I have donated the sheep, only one third left. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بل أبقيت كلها إلا ثلثها. Shifal perspective. He said to her, you, the only one you preserve, the only one you didn't preserve is the one third. The two-third of the sheep is the one that you have preserved, you have kept. That's what really you have kept for us. We have two lives. This dunya and the next. Laka daran. This one and the next one. Hajj Amirul Mu'mineen Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik rahimahullah bin Nas 97 Hijri. Then he passed by Medina in his way to Mecca and he stayed there for three nights. Then he said, this Medina Rasulullah must be the scholars of Hadith. قال هلا أتيتم لنا بأحد قد أدرك أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه يحدثنا بشيء من خبر رسول الله. I want someone have met the companions so he can tell us something that he heard from the companions about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فالزهري رحمه الله قال إن ها هنا أبو حازم التمار أبو حازم التمار من كبار التابعين إمام عالم كبير في الحديث من رواة الحديث من الزهاد الوعاظ يسد أبو حازم التمار is here and he had met the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he called him then when أبو حازم التمار came to the king سليمان بن عبد الملك he told him يا أبا حازم ما هذه الجفوة قد أتانا العلماء ولم تأتنا. I said, Hazim, why you are like, you know, not being nice to us? You know, all the scholars came and met me, but you didn't. قال يا أمير المؤمنين, how can be a jafwa? How can be not not being nice or like, you know, if, if there is something between us? There's nothing between us. I didn't come because I never met you in my <coughs> life, and you never met me in my life. And we don't know each other. So I thought it's not appropriate for me to come. Then he said to him, Asaba Shaykh, he looked at the Zuhri, he said, Your man is good. <laughs> He's right and I'm wrong. What do you think we hate death? فقال لأنكم خرّدتم أخراكم وعمّرتم دنياكم يا أمير المؤمنين فكرهتم أن تنتقلوا من من العمران إلى الخراب. said يا أمير المؤمنين because you have ruined your آخرة and you have beautified your your dunya you have built this dunya very well but the آخرة you have corrupted it who wants to move from the well maintained well يعني Build and taken care of and the beautiful place to a ruined place. Who wants to do that? And if I tell you, with all due respect, where's my man from Louisiana? Yeah. If I tell you, you know what, I'm going to move you to Louisiana. Some rural place in Louisiana. Or Balash, Louisiana. In Louisiana, they say, thanks God we have Mississippi. Okay. Anyway, otherwise they will be in the bottom. So, no, I love Louisiana. So, if I tell you move from Houston after you build this nice house and you start your business and everything, move to Louisiana, move to Mississippi. Who wants to do that? I already built everything here. So he said to him, who wants to leave the area that invests in it to an area he never going to spend, spend any investment in it? That's why you hate death. قال صدقت. You're right. قال فكيف القدوم على الله? How how we will meet Allah يا أبا حازم? فقال فأما المحسن 
فَكَالْغَائِبِ يَقْدِمُ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ The one who have done good is like the one who coming to meet his family after a long traveling. And they love him and they welcoming him. قَالَ وَأَمَّا الْمُسِيءِ فَكَالْآبِقِ يَقْدِمُ عَلَىٰ مَوْلَاهِ The wrongdoers is like the criminal when you bring him to justice. فَبَكَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَقَالَ يَا لَيْتَ شِعْرِي مَا لَنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَا أَبَا حَازِمْ He started tearing and crying. Then he said, يَا أَبَا حَازِمْ What do you think we have with Allah? Yani what do you think Allah have for us? قَالَ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اِعْرِضْ عَمَلَكَ عَلَى الْكِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَا أَمِيرَ If you don't know what Allah have for you, look what Allah said in the Quran about you. He said, Al-Quran about me? He said, yes. And that's to each and every one of us. قَالَ وَأَيْنَ أَجْدُ Where I can find this in the Quran? Then he said, you will find it in what Allah said. إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ لَفِي جَحِيمٍ Righteous people will be in good place. Wrongdoers. Fujjar, those who do the haram and they don't care. They are in jaheem. قَالَ وَأَيْنَ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ so where is Allah's mercy? قَالَ قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ It is, where is Allah's mercy? He said it's near to those who are good. Near to those who are muhsin. Near to those who help. Near to those who perfect their deeds. مِنْ أَجْمَلْ مَا قَالَ الْغَزَالِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ One of the best things I read for Al-Ghazali رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He said, we all know that Allah is al-Razzaq. But nobody sat home and said, Ya Rab, since you are Razzaq, give me provision. We all work so we receive the provision. And we all know that Allah is Ar Rahman. But for somehow, we sit waiting for the mercy to come. You have also to work to earn the mercy. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Men ja'ani yamshi ju'tu harwala. Men taqarraba ilayya the shibran taqarrabtu ilayya. But lazim taqarrab al shibr. If you walk to him one step, he will run to you, Allah says. And if you take that much of a step, Allah will take much bigger step towards you. That's how it works. You have to put up. That's, that concept is, is an important concept to be in our mind. Maybe this is one of the last... Yeah, it is one of the last talk that I have with you in this Ramadan. And who knows, maybe it's the last talk ever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give a long life with goodness and, and health. لا تأسفن على الدنيا وزينتها فالموت لا شك يفنينا ويفنيها Don't be too worried about this worldly life. Death will ruin it and will ruin us. لا دار للمرء بعد الموت يسكنها إلا التي كان قبل الموت يبنيها. The only place that you will live in is the place that you are building before you die. إن بناها بخير طاب مسكنه وإن بناها بشر خاب بانيها. If you build it with goodness and righteousness, you will be in good. But if you build it and ruin it with with حرام and 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 sins, you're ruined. لا تشبع النفس من دنيا تجمعها وبلغة من قوام العيش تكفيها. You know, the lucky one, the one who really understand this concept and get ready for what is in front of him. Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik, هذا his stories are amazing. مرة he went into um, like a camping. With his royal family members. And he, someone who's so dear to him, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. So he said, I want Umar to come with us, make sure that he comes with us. As a royal family, each and every one of these princes have what? Have soldiers, have uh, khadam, people work for him, that's right, you know, and uh, slaves, and what you name it. So when they go to picnic and you know they're gonna camp in this certain place, they go hunting. So everyone went and sent his servants and his basically uh, crew ahead of him. What they did, they put the tent up, they made the food, they made the dinner, 
everybody, you know, the, 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 the sitting area, where are they going to sleep, water, everything ready. So when they arrive after hunting and stuff, everybody went to what? To their tent. But Umar ibn Aziz did not send anyone. For Sulaiman, after he rested, he realized Umar ibn Aziz did not send anyone. Then he asked, look for him, what is he? They found him in the, under a tree in tears. They said to him, Amir al-Mu'mineen want to see you. So he came to the Khalifa and he said, Ya Umar, ma yubkik? What's wrong? Why you are crying? Faqal, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, nadartu khiyamakum. I was looking at your places. فأدركت أن من قدم شيئا وجد شيئا لا إله إلا الله هذا عجوبة عمر بن العزيز يا أمير المؤمنين I realized that those who put ahead of them something they will find something and those who do not put ahead of them something will end up like me وَإِنِّي أَخْشَ أَنْ أَقْدِمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَمَا قَدَّمْتُ شَيْئًا يَسْتُرُونِي And I am worried that I will come in the day of judgment and I have not put forward enough to protect me. Enough to make me honored in the day of judgment. قَالْ فَبَكَى وَبَكَى سُلَيْمَان Both start crying. قل لكم ميعاد يوم لا تستأخرون عنه ساعة ولا تستقدمون. There is an appointment for each and every one of us. You cannot delay it. You cannot rush it. يا أيها الناس أو people إن وعد الله حق. The promise of Allah is true. فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ Don't be deceived by this dunya. Don't let the shaytan delude you. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Fear the day when you will return to your Lord. ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَّا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And each and every one of you will be recompensed, will be judged according to their deeds. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ A day when the wealth or children will benefit you. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except they will come with a sound heart. And a person in that day will not be saved unless their good deeds are more than the bad deeds. وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْحَقِّ فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Those who come in the Day of Judgment and their good deeds scale is so heavy, they are the winners. And those who their good deeds is light and bad deeds heavier, they are the one who will lose themselves to hellfire. My brothers and sisters, when you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Day of Judgment, the only thing that will benefit you is your good deeds. The only thing will benefit whoever can benefit you on that day is the people of taqwa. The, this, the religion is the deen. Those of taqwa, the one who will intercede. Those of taqwa who Allah collect the family together after the judgment. My brothers and sisters, I think it is essential for us to realize this fact. As Ramadan coming to an end, our life coming to an end, 
And we will meet Allah alone. كُلُّهُمْ آتِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدًا That's why Umar رضي الله عنه وأرضاه said حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُوا Hold yourself accountable today before Allah hold you accountable tomorrow. يَقُولِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدْنِي عَبْدَهُ الْمُؤْمِنِ Allah will bring his servants in the day of judgment, the believing servant close to him in a private manner. في حديث صفوان بن محرز المازني رضي الله عنه. So in private, ويستره, cover him, and he said, أتعرف ذنب كذا, أتعرف ذنب كذا, أتعرف ذنب كذا, فيقول إي يا ربي, إي يا رب. Do you remember this sin and this sin and this sin? Yes, when you miss Fajr, when you backbite, when you got angry, when you did this, when you do that. Yes, when you were young, when you're fool. There's no such thing, I'm young, I'm fool. If you are adult, you are accountable. Then when he mentioned all his sins, فَيَرَى أَنَّهُ هَالِكُ لَا مَحَالَةً He sees that he is ruined, خلاص, he go to hellfire. Then Allah said, I never expose these sins in the dunya. And today I will forgive it for you. فَيُعْطَى كِتَابَ حَسَنَاتِهِ Then you will be given a book of good goodness, or the book where all his good deeds are. And the bad deeds will be wiped out. أَمَّا الْكَافِرُ وَالْمُنَافِقُ فَيَقُولُ الْأَشْهَادُ هَؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا عَلَى رَبِّهِمْ The hypocrites and the disbelievers, <coughs> the witnesses in the day of Jerusalem said, these, these are liars, they never really believed. يَقُولُ الرَّبُّ فِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَنَا الْمَلِكُ الدَّيَّانِ I am the king, I am the one who will hold each and every one of you accountable. وَلَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ أَنْ يَدْخُلَهَا وَلَهُ عِنْدَ أَحَدٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ مَظْلَمَةً حَتَّى أَقُصُّهُ مِنْهَا حَتَّى مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ Allah says, no one among the people of fire will enter fire unless I settle whatever between him and others. Even if that person from Jannah, people of Jannah. يعني, even if you are from the people of Jannah, but you have done wrong to someone who belonged to the hellfire, Allah must settle the matter before you go into Jannah and you go to, he goes to the hellfire. قال, ولا ينبغي لأحد من أهل الجنة أن يدخل الجنة ولأحد من أهل النار عنده حق حتى أقصه من حتى اللطمة even if it's a hit, small hit, I will settle it between you. فَقَالْ رَجُلْ يَا الله We come in the day of judgment, no money, how can I pay him? قال الله سبحانه at that time قال بالحسنات والسيئات The currency in the day of judgment is good, is the reward and the sins. That's the currency. That's why Allah says يَا عِبَادِي إِنَّمَا هِيَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ أُحْصِيهَا لَكُمْ My servant, it is your good deeds. I collect it. I count it. If you find good, praise no one except Allah and thank no one except Allah. And if you find evil and bad, don't blame anyone except yourself. You know, في واحد من الشعراء هو يعني حتى بعضهم يقول من الزنادقة الشعراء بس هو فاجر يعني كله في الخمر وال والمشاكل هذه أبو نواس أبو نواس is, is an amazing poet but he is very يعني, bad Muslim let's put it this way drinking and stuff like that كان له صاحب he has a friend he always comes to advise him and to remind him اتق الله فير الله فير الله his friend died فوقف أبو نواس على قبره بعد أن دفن أبو نواس was there in the funeral so when he was replaced in his grave, نظر إليه كذا أبو نواس وقال ما أوعظك اليوم ساكتا من وعظك يوم أن كنت متكلما When he saw him in his grave alone, he said that more powerful your advice to me now, while you cannot talk, while you're not talking, while you're silent, is more powerful than all the advices that you gave me when you used to talk, when you used to remind me. Allah is my witness. 
I didn't choose to speak about this just to make you feel bad or to feel good or to, so I can facilitate funds from you. Mm -mm. I don't care if I don't, if I don't collect a dollar. But if this, if these words can save somebody in the day of judgment, that's all what I care for. It's more important than anything else tonight. If these words can change your behavior, and your perspective of the dunya. That would be the best thing that I can achieve. Because then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us, will take care of the masjid. But I know on the 27, the hearts are soft. And we only make this kind of mawa'id once a month. Because if you do it more than that, you become ineffective. But I'm still going to fundraise. Because I'm just clear my intention. I'm telling you what is it. I ask you today, I don't get anything personally. You know that. I ask you today to give for that day that's ahead of you. I ask you today to prepare yourself for the day. I ask yourself, to prepare yourself for the day when you leave this dunya behind you. And in that moment, you can't give, you can't do anything. Allah said that when people die, they said, I wish I can come back to the dunya to give. So I can give and I'll be among those who muhsin, give help. I hope that we truly Sincere when we say we love the Akhirah and the Akhirah means to us so much. I ask you tonight to be so generous with us. And I ask you tonight to give while your heart full of love and fear and hope and ask Allah by this donation that Allah protect you. Because you are giving to His house. You giving for His sake. You giving for the causes that He loves. I want to say, it touched my heart. And maybe that's one of the reasons it inspired me to talk about this tonight. That one of the first pledges that I saw, it's a pledge written, the name in it. Someone who's dear to all of us, or many of us who knows him, who passed away a while ago. But when I saw his name as a donor, it just touched my heart. And I said, I wish that I would have children of mine will be like his. I wish that I can leave behind me a wealth that will continue to be a source of sadaqah way after I die. Which is Dr. Abu Izzat Abu Al-Aish rahimahullah ta'ala wa ghafar Allahu lah wa rafa darajata fi illiyin wa jama'ana wa iyaah wa ahlah and I found a donation from him for $10,000. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma ghafir lahu arhamu wa rafa darajatih. Allahumma salih fi dhurriyatih wa ahlih ya rabbil alameen. Such an inspiring thing to see. An inspiring thing to start with. Another person told me, Sheikh, I'm committed for $36,000. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him, uh, blessed him, and blessed his wealth and his family. I mean, he said, Sheikh, every day I will be, you know, or every week I will be giving like $500 for the rest of the year. And another person came to me and he said, I'm committed for $20,000. He said, you can count on me. And another person came to me who's young man, Yani, I'm not sure if he's in his like 30s or not yet, but if he is in early, early 30s. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best sadaqah, the one that comes from someone who have life ahead of him, fears poverty, fear, you know, have a lot of, yani, mashallah, long life ahead of him, but yet he gives. 
And he said, Sheikh, you count me for $15,000. Young man. And I have another person came to me and he said, and that's person, mashallah, him and his wife, may Allah bless them both, been giving every week $10,000 so far. So that's about $50,000 almost. If it's, if it's not 50, please make it 50. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know, I, I think it's 50. Yeah, but I might be mistaken and it's 40. But anyway. You know, there is a brother here in the masjid. Once I, I made a fundraising and I said, okay, I will. I, and I, I, claim, I said he will match whatever. And I said it's $70,000. Anyway, he ended up, his tab was 120000 something like that. And he came to me and said, Sheikh Walid, did you read this correctly? Or are you just like, I said, just like what? <laughs> he said, read it. So I read it. I read it wrong. I, I thought he's going to match everything. And I said, Ya Khitislam Rasik, Allah Yarda Alik, whatever you give, Ma'al al Muslim min Sabi. So instead of giving me 120, I still remember that. He gave me 180 or something like that. And he said something to me that gave me goosebumps every time. He said, Sheikh Walid, I don't think you have made that number by mistake. I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was trying to teach me that I'm capable of doing more than what I said that day. And he have made you speak that on your tongue. And I consider this a message from Allah to me, telling me I know what you have and I know you can do more than what, this, what you said. That's, that's Iman. That feeling, that feeling is more rewarding than the money itself.